Tom Steyer joins us, former Democratic presidential candidate and founder of Next Gen America, very focused on climate. Tom, it's good to have you here. Sarah, it's great to be with you. Let me just say one thing. I know it's thing. hard to do, but... but just, oh, I, I, what? I, are you going to talk politics? Because I was just going to say, let's put aside politics. No, I was just going to correct let's, let's the actually number you figure gave. Out, uh, you said a oh, billion acres do. have burned in California so far this year. Just to be clear, three and a half million acres have burned in California so far this year. Wow. So three yeah, times that it's amount. It's been very rapid. It's uh, been historic. It's more than any other year. And we're halfway through fire season. So my question to you is, what is the economic cost of, of all of this on the western part of the U.S. And, and for the U.S. in general? How do you think about that? Well, the first way to think about that is just the destruction of buildings, of structures, of life, and of lands. And that's in the tens of billions of dollars. And no one's given an estimate so far of what this is going to cost, but it's definitely in the tens of billions or hundreds of billions of dollars. I think the real question here is that this is not a one-off experience, Sarah. You know, what we're seeing is the worst wildfires in California history by far following the, work, the highest temperatures in California history by far. So what we're seeing is definitely a climate-related event in a climate crisis that is not stable or contained, but in fact is continuing to grow worse, where we're seeing these wildfires, these historic you know, devastating wildfires at the same time that there are five tornadoes in the Gulf of Mexico and a hurricane hitting Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi today. So we're seeing, yes, structures being burned, people dying, a devastation mm -hmm. the size of Connecticut. But beyond that, it's part of an ongoing crisis that we have to address that this president has refused to acknowledge and where we need to make a dramatic change and get leadership in there to deal with this crisis as it gets worse. And I want to talk about solutions in just a moment. But, but as you outline some of the damage and we watch these sort of apocalyptic images on our screen, California in particular, Tom, where, where you're on the, the task force for the governor advising on the reopening, it seems like it couldn't come at a worse time with the pandemic and, and the state being especially hard hit. What's the outlook for this state, for, for home values and companies and just basic economic activity? Well, let's be clear. Governor Newsom has said from the very beginning that we have to put health and safety first, that we have to make sure that we protect lives, and that's the best way to protect livelihoods. And I think that he's right. That's what has been true. And I think that for us to come out of this, we're going to have to support small business. We're going to have to rebuild this state with equity in mind and with a clean energy economy in mind. And there's no doubt that the pandemic has hurt us. But it's also true that Governor Newsom has stepped up accurately to protect lives and that we're going to have to come together. And that's what this task force has been about, making recommendations to the governor so that we get employment and business recovery as strong as possible, as equitable as possible, and with an absolute awareness of the need for clean energy jobs across this state as we rebuild. Tom, uh, to, to, to what extent could these fires have been prevented? Uh, or, or put a different way, uh, what could Joe Biden do to make sure they don't happen in, in 2021? Well, Wilfred, let's break down this problem into immediate adaptation and reaction to the health and life-threatening aspects of these fires, and then the longer-term control of this climate crisis. You know, is it true that we could do short-term things in terms of where houses are built, how forests are managed, how people are, are directed to protect lives and safety? Yes. And it's also true that the federal government owns half of California. So the extent we're going to do better management of the of the forest, that is largely a federal government issue. But there's no way to say that over time we can adapt 
to the changes that the climate crisis is bringing to California and to all other the other 49 states. This is an issue that requires new leadership, obviously, in the presidency. And we have a great candidate on this in Joe Biden. It's a global issue where we need a president who can lead globally, because 85 percent of the CO2 emissions are from outside the United States.